Hello, I'm Ron and welcome again to my channel Popsicle where I talk about pop culture, science, and everything in between. Now, upon the suggestion of a friend, what started off as a one-shot review of Project Power out to Netflix now is going to be a regular series of episodes on my channel where I talk about whether a piece of science fiction is good science fiction or bad science fiction, not based on how good of a movie or a TV series it is, but based on how good the science is and how well uh, the piece presents the science. And for this inaugural episode of Good Science Fiction, Bad Science Fiction, with a title that I might change at a later time, I'm going to talk about Cowboy Bebop. Now, what I'm going to admit next might revoke my uh, anime fan cred, but I have to admit that I just recently finished the Cowboy Bebop series. Yeah, for shame, right? I mean, it started in 1998, um, and uh, I had many, many opportunities to watch it, but I never got around to. I started the first episode a few months ago, but uh, never quite finished it until I decided that I want to write on it because it's a classic and it's a classic for many good reasons. It's an anime directed by Shinichiro Watanabe who would uh, go on to direct Samurai Champloo, Carol and Tuesday, and several other uh, popular uh, pieces of anime prior to uh, directing Cowboy Bebop for Sunrise Studio, which is also known for Gundam, he co-directed Macros Plus. So what is Cowboy Bebop all about? It's a space western, it's a science fiction cyberpunk uh, hybrid. It's set in 2071, a faraway future where humans have developed special ways of traveling in the solar system. And this is what I'm going to focus on when talking about the science. Recall in my first episode, if you got to watch it, that one definition of science fiction given by Darko Sovin is that it tackles the nova or the strange newness that really makes the material different from real life. But this novum has to be reflected in real science. Now, what are the two primary nova in Cowboy Bebop? One is hyperspace travel. So in science fiction and real science, hyperspace is a sort of pocket dimension or a subspace dimension. You can call it a fourth dimension if you want. That can be accessible within the real space that we have around us and thus speed up travel because the laws of nature and the laws of physics don't quite behave in the same way within that hyperspace. So if a technology or a civilization, I should say, is able to access or develop technology that allows us to go into hyperspace that really speeds up travel. Essentially, traveling through hyperspace allows faster than light travel and is, uh, allows us to cover very long distances, intergalactic distances, over a much shorter period of time. It's not the same as wormholes or folds in space. These are two other ways by which the length of time that, that space travel requires can be sped up or shortened. The other major novum in Cowboy Bebop is terraforming. And you'll see this in the way that Mars, Ganymede, the, the moon of Jupiter, and several other places in the solar system have been transformed into veritable Earth-like habitats. Uh, it's, it's practically impossible to be able to distinguish the streets of Mars uh, from the streets of Chinatown on Earth, or Tokyo for that matter. Uh, and terraforming is not purely science fiction in the sense that it's not impossible with the current technology that we have. In fact, terraforming has been done to a certain extent in certain places in the world like Ascension Island. Um, but on a large planetary scale, we haven't seen that, of course. But Mars has always been a prime candidate. By 2071, in the setting of Cowboy Bebop, we've terraformed not only Mars, but also several moons of the solar system. Now, these two nova inform all of the settings, all of the events that happen in the 26 episodes of Cowboy Bebop. You have these as wonderful settings, and really, this emphasizes the, the, the magnitude and the quality and the brilliance of world building of Cowboy Bebop, which is one of its primary strengths. 
here you see that world building doesn't have to mean creating a world from scratch. No, you're just building on what you already have, which is Earth, projecting it forward into the future and seeing where we will go when we finally do cosmic diaspora and start colonizing other worlds, in this case, planets and moons. We Hyperspace hasn't taken us beyond the solar system as of yet, at least in the setting depicted in the anime. But we are able to travel from one spot in the solar system to another very, very quickly. And that's through the hyperspace network that is very clearly and elegantly depicted in the series. And another note on the hyperspace, this actually leads us to one more trope. It's not a novum per se, but it's a common trope in science fiction that we also see in Cowboy Bebop, which is the ruined Earth trope. Essentially, there was an accident some 50 years before the setting of a Cowboy Bebop. So, actually, if you do the math, that's going to be around this time, 2020, 2021, where a hyperspace gate exploded and rendered the Earth virtually inhospitable or in uninhabitable, at least on the surface. And that that is also an important part of the events, uh, particularly in terms of the characterization of certain lead characters, especially Faye Valentine. There are also other sci-fi tropes presented in Cowboy Bebop, such as apotheosis, uh, being able to transcend the human body. This harkens back to transhumanism, although it's depicted quite differently. Uh, here, it's more like a psychological state um, uh, uh, brought about by access to a video game. Okay. Uh, you also have uh, genetically modified organisms. There's this particular episode where an eco-terrorist group uses uh, a virus that is based on, scientifically on uh, the small genetic difference between chimpanzees and humans and uh, what that what that virus does is it reverts or devolves uh, humans into their you know presumably uh, in their to their ape ancestors. Um, this is one part where the science fic the science is not as good. Uh, it's a common trope that we fall into the the belief that organisms can devolve or go back to a former state, and that's what you'd call a reverse evolution. Uh, that, that it does not work that way. Uh, first of all, we are not descended from chimpanzees. We share common ancestors with chimpanzees, uh, from which we split around six to eight million years ago. Uh, but a uh, simple uh, genetic change will not revert us morphologically, mentally, psychologically to our ape-like ancestors. However, all the other Practically all the other science that's depicted in Cowboy Bebop is really sound, at least based on what we have now. Of course, the physics of hyperspace travel uh, still has a lot to be studied and discovered. But, you know, uh, overall, the, the, the science is solid in the sense that it's not too far-fetched. It, it, Cowboy Bebop doesn't really attempt to explain too much of it. Okay? Uh, but with what they have, and, and the fact that they didn't try to say too much about how the science works, it, it, it does work overall. And most importantly, it's, it presents a very solid milieu uh, in which our characters, who are some of the most interesting characters ever in anime, to walk in. The main characters are Spike Spiegel, Jet Black, Faye Valentine, Ed Wong, and Ayn the dog uh, and it's very exciting to see how their characters develop particularly within the social setting which is intergalactic space within the solar system and again these are guided and informed by the two uh, nova that i had mentioned which are terraforming and hyperspace travel both of which are very effectively drawn out now, again, uh, as with hyperspace travel, with terraforming, there's not too much information given here. Uh, what's particularly interesting is this episode where Venus itself has also been terraformed. And you even have floating islands there. It's much harder to terraform Venus than it is to terraform Mars. We have a basic idea of how to terraform Mars that would involve um, 
uh, preparing the the soil and that and creating an atmosphere and one way by which scientists speculate that we'll be doing that is to create a uh, uh, global warming through carbon emissions the exact opposite of what we want to do on earth on earth we want to reduce carbon emissions so that we reduce global warming but in mars where there's no atmosphere we want to create that by creating an artificial global warming scenario by spewing out as much carbon dioxide as we can how do we do this we create factories on mars to spew out these these uh, for, uh, carbon uh, dioxide through burning fossil fuels uh, there's even uh, the idea of using giant space mirrors to melt the ice at the poles of mars so that this would release methane which is a form of uh, which it contains carbon and also carbon dioxide and yeah essentially we're going to uh, do intentional global warming on mars to create an atmosphere and then of course it's an entire it's a different matter of preparing the soil you need to use pioneer organisms first like bacteria lichen moss okay that would prepare the soil enrich it with nutrients break it down make it more hospitable to later forms of plant life and and that would have to happen in greenhouses first and foremost where the gases are regulated because right now uh, the gases on mars won't allow for earth life to develop it's all very interesting and all scientifically possible but very very expensive in fact what we can say about both nova hyperspace travel and terraforming is that they will require a lot of money but also a lot of energy hyperspace and wormhole travel require a, a tremendous amount of energy every time it's used okay so i would assume that by this time the earth has already reached the level at least of a type 1 civilization according to the kardashev scale there are three levels of civilization Type 1 is being able to utilize all of the energy that a planet receives from the from its host star. In our case, if we are able to harness all of the energy that we get from the sun, we reach type 1 civilization, which we are not quite uh, at yet. If we reach type 2 civilization, that's being able to utilize all of the energy from the solar system, whereas type 3 is the galactic level where we are able to utilize the, a civilization, I should say, is able to utilize energy from the entire galaxy. We're not even a type 1, but I assume that for us to be able to do hyperspace travel, we need to be able to harness at least all of the energy from the sun, and that's type 1 civilization. So that's one assumption that we can make. And then, the governments had enough money to create the hyperspace gates in the first place and do terraforming without any, any alien help. As far as we can tell from watching the episodes of Cowboy Bebop, there are no extraterrestrials yet. Now, I'd like to highlight one other aspect of Cowboy Bebop which makes it a cut above the rest of anime. And that's the brilliant jazz score by the great Kano Yoko. Kano Yoko has no equal. Uh, she also composed the score of Macros Plus and Visions of Escaflone. And she is brilliant at what she does especially considering that she's not professionally trained uh, i was very happy when i heard that kano yoko was actually was invited a few years ago by the academy of motion picture arts and sciences the same body that nominates the oscars to be a member uh, that's that's how that's how the world uh, the, the cinema world uh, how much importance the cinema world gives her for her score of this anime and several other works in Japanese culture. And really, if she didn't do the score of Cowboy Bebop, it would be such a different anime. Shinichiro Watanabe, the director, said that while he gave guidance and instructions to Kano Yoko, he basically gave Kano Yoko free reign to do what she wanted. And of course, uh, uh, J-pop and anime fans would know that Kano Yoko has had a long-standing collaboration with the great uh, Maya Sakamoto. Who is also involved in the soundtrack of Cowboy Bebop. So Cowboy Bebop's music is influenced by uh, uh, by boogie, by jazz, by blues, and it really permeates into each and every episode. In fact, some of the titles have to do with the type of music that's depicted. And the songs are great, uh, they're upbeat, they're, they're uh, uh, 
really heartfelt and almost spiritual in their level of you know making you feel what you're supposed to feel in these episodes so uh, cowboy bebop owes as much to its music uh, as, as it does to its visual style and its plot and characterization now in case you haven't heard netflix is producing a live action version of cowboy bebop uh, they have already cast john cho as spike spiegel very exciting casting and most importantly shinichiro watanabe is a consultant and kano yoko will also be doing the score so great things ahead uh, it's very promising hopefully it lives up to expectations and gives us one of the better uh, live action adaptations of an anime and we all know that we haven't had a lot of those right with the possible exception of the Ruroni Kenshin live action movies which are brilliant now to end this episode essentially what I want to say is my verdict on Cowboy Bebop is it good science fiction or is it bad science fiction well not only is it an excellent must-see anime for anyone any fan of anime any fan of science fiction or any fan of quality media it is good science fiction because it doesn't go overboard with too much explanation which too with too much uh, exposition and yet it presents it so simply as a part of the world building process the terraforming and the hyperspace gates and in fact it even informs certain cataclysmic events that ruin the earth which would set things in motion for our characters in cowboy bebop so Cowboy Bebop is highly recommended. Of course, I don't need to convince those who have already watched it ahead of me. But if you haven't seen Cowboy Bebop, do yourselves the favor of watching one of the best anime that have ever been produced. So if you like what you just saw, don't forget to subscribe. Please also suggest certain science fiction pieces that you would like me to uh, talk about in this good science fiction, bad science fiction set of episodes. Thank you and see you again soon.